Hey, buddies, Potato McWhiskey here, and welcome back to the Urban Complexity Mare series, where things have been popping off here. We have expanded our empire massively, and we managed to win a war against uh, the Malians in order to liberate Valletta. Unfortunately, uh, Mongolia were the one who took the suzerainty, which is fine. It's not the end of the world. I kind of wanted just Valletta to be independent, so I'm kind of happy with that outcome, even if I wasn't, like, the one who perfectly benefited from it. Oh, I should totally upgrade my holy side here. I can get the stupa. I could I could buy that with faith, and then I could get the hospitium or the garden. Let's go ahead and faith buy the stupa because we know what that does, right? Now we can get the garden. Now the garden gives you five percent faith and ten percent great people points, which is quite good. It also gives you amenities, housing, faith, and extra citizen yield faith. That seems quite powerful. Ooh, the hospitium is quite good. Plus one faith from each great work and twenty five percent religious tourism in this city, and it has two housing and a faith. That seems pretty good. This is great for faith generation and great people generation. This is great for tourism generation. Now, there isn't that much tourism in my capital. However, I do have room for three relics. So if I were to maybe come on over here and talk to Mongolia, this isn't Mongolia. I clicked on the wrong guy. Listen, <laughs> maybe Mongolia has a relic or someone somewhere must have a relic that they're willing to trade me. Wow, nobody actually has a relic. Interesting. So we, we can't do anything with regards to that then. I could, I could in theory, fit a couple of extra relics in here and get a little bit of extra religious tourism. But the nice thing is, even if I can't do that, holy sites generate a little bit of extra tourism for on the religious front anyway. So if I go ahead and grab myself a hospitium, uh, you know, we'll... We'll get a little bit of extra faith and a little bit of extra tourism, which is, of course, naturally what we want. Any city-states with missions for trade? I don't think so, so we're just going to go ahead and look for gold, and Cusco is as good as any place. I definitely feel like getting an encampment is actually a pretty sweet move here. It'll give me two envoys and also potentially provide me with some yields in the city that maybe I would have a hard time getting without, so I'll go ahead and build that encampment. We got our third trebuchet. I'll just go ahead and park that somewhere over here. Uh, actually, you know what? You can you can park yourself here. And uh, It is railroad time, baby. Hell yeah. So I'll slowly just keep building railroads. Let's get the Museum of Art. You know what? I'll just go ahead. Or do I want a Museum of Art or a Museum of Archaeology? Archaeology feels better to me, so I'll go ahead and buy the Archaeology and the Archaeologist. And then I'll get the city to instead work on the Pleasure Pier, because that's going to bump up a little bit of the tourism in this city. Kayapoi got its orchard. I reckon this city needs a little bit of manual tender love and care. So I'll go for this. This gives me a surplus of plus two on this tile. So I can work a one food, I can work two one food tiles without really hurting my food surplus in this city. And then I need to find another uh, two food tile. And I believe the orchard is actually worth three food, one production, which means my total surplus, if I tabulate all of these things, I've still got room for two more people working two one food tiles. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull one, someone off this, make sure this is worked. And now I have a total of four surplus food, which means I'll grow my next population faster. Uh, that's four surplus food, not including the, the capital. It's actually six total, but four like re reserved food. And then that'll mean I can actually work a lot more tiles. So this city's food is basically handled for the foreseeable future. It doesn't have amazing production, but in addition to things like granaries and all that sort of stuff, that's going to be helpful. So that means I can actually probably queue up something to keep the city busy. Mont Saint Michel is actually an interesting idea in order for me to get some relics. Let me have a look around here and see if there's anywhere I could build it. I, I can actually build it here in 12 turns. Yeah, I think I'll try. I'll try to go for Mont Saint Michel over here in Fanganui. I will finish that coal power plant first, however. So if I can get that up, it'll be helpful. I'll just go ahead and get the water mill because this industrial zone is next to water and the water mill gives you extra production for being next to water in your industrial zone. And then I'll go for the harbor and then that city will just be busy for a while. Any trade route envoys? Not really. There is some yields here from trading here, making nearly 900 gold per turn, which is an absurd amount of gold. Not really the greatest city ever. Slightly better down here. Sure, let's head down south. Keep stealing gold with our spies. I'll go ahead and take comparison on this Corsair guy and then just keep on pillaging. So basically, I'm just trying to get value out of these horsemen units um, while I have them. I may even look to combine them together to make them stronger. But the more value I can get out of them, the better. I know that's a pretty tautological thing to say, but it is also accurate. Or self-evident, maybe not tautological. We've got our first great musician. Let's put this great work over here. This is where Pingala is. So we get the most value from great works in here because Pingala has the 100% yields 
from Great Works uh, perk plugged in. My Courser took a smidge of damage. I'll heal him and hope that he doesn't do that much damage. I'll pillage here, step over, and then combine them together in order to have a slightly stronger unit that has a better chance of surviving. And actually it might be a good idea to redirect my army over here to deal with these. So let's just get our musketmen and stuff moving up this way. Speaking of musketmen, I don't remember if we had decided that my capital needed an airport. Let's pick up the laboratory for the 0 0.3 science in the city per population. It's an 18 pop city, so that's nearly six science we'll get out of that. And now it's finally time to get the airport in Farakara. The appeal on this civic square is quite high. So now I think getting a grand hotel makes sense because that converts the adjacency bonus of this district into tourism, as well as increasing the adjacency bonus if the uh, appeal is quite high in that city. All great things happening here. Level up my spy. I'll take polygraph. That could be quite powerful to use him defensively. Polygraph is one of those uh, abilities that scales really well into the late game because it makes all your spies better if you keep him at home, I believe, if I remember correctly how it works. Nice, we completely filled this lake in with Huey Toakali. Now, we don't get many amenities for it, but it does mean that every lake in my empire now gives plus one food and plus one production. Now, that, that said, I don't have a whole lot of lakes in my empire, all right? Like, if you look at my empire... <laughs> I'm not, I'm not seeing any lakes, okay? The only lake I have is literally this one lake tile here. It's now a three food, one production, one gold tile, all right? Talk about value, but more importantly, we now have access to democracy, but it's all important. Uh, three diplomatic favor per turn. It also gets three envoys every time we generate 200 influence. So to put that in comparison, uh, theocracy gets you two envoys at 150 influence and generates two less influence per turn. So we definitely want to plug in democracy for that alone. We're also going to go down one military policy card, but up one in both or in all three of the economic, diplomatic and wildcard locations. So tons more options with regards to our government, as well as access to better trade routes, in particular trade routes with our allies, giving us an extra four food and four production for every single trade route to an ally and extra alliance points so we upgrade our alliance faster which combines really really well with that one city state that we actually are suiting up that gives us extra civic square adjacency based on the highest level of our alliance which means the more civic square adjacency we're getting the more tourism we're getting i actually forgot to check if the tourism card is giving us extra adjacency memes we'll figure that out and then most importantly most beautifully is a 15 percent discount on purchases with gold now a 15 percent discount doesn't sound like much Okay, but discounts are recursive and stacking. So having a 15% discount isn't like having, you know, turning 100 gold into 115 gold. Having a 15% discount is like turning 85 gold into 100 gold, which means our purchasing power actually increases by something much closer to about 20% when you consider that that 15 gold we save can also be used at a purchasing power of an extra, you know, however, whatever 17 or 20% higher that that works out. So this is, this is a recursive benefit that approaches a limit of about a 20% increase in the total purchasing power of my empire. Let's, now that we have democracy, let's go ahead and pick up capitalism because I would like to get marketing agencies as well as, oh, marketing agency gives plus one appeal on all tiles in this city. Oh, that seems really good. That seems really good for tourism. Oh, wow. That seems so powerful. We'll also have access to market economy, but we're going to come in here now and uh, like I said, we'll switch to democracy for a variety of reasons. We want all three of these th things plugged in. Public works. Actually, do I even really need builders at this stage of the game? I don't think so. Public works is probably becoming a little bit irrelevant. New deal is quite good. Plus four housing and plus two amenities to all cities with at least two specialty districts. That combos really, really well with Republican Legacy to give me a ton of housing and amenities in the late game so that I can set my growth tag to be vertical. I'm also going to plug in Vistle Banking. So now combined with Democracy's benefit, I'm going to get six food per turn and six production per turn for every trade route to an ally city. And I'll get half an alliance point per turn because you combine those two abilities together. I would like to use Trade Confederation for my international trade routes. I'm trading internationally quite well. However, Admiralty Court looks quite interesting five-year plan is also really good here industrial zone adjacency i do feel like public works is like a really safe one to have plugged in as is liberalism plus one amenity extra builder charges is always super valuable especially in a tourism game where like i can build infinite fishing boats but i just don't need builder charges right now so i may plug that one out 
at my next opportunity. But I have the pleasure pier, which opens up options, opens up a lot of options here, actually. I could grab the marina, which would give me plus one tourism for every fishing boat tile in the city, which would be one, two, three fishing boats. That's worth three tourism versus the Ferris wheel, which is more of an AOE thing. I wouldn't mind the AOE myself. That would be quite nice. These both roughly kind of reach the same thing. This is just better for the local city, I think. Yeah, this is like, this is just better for tourism. Three tourism plus one culture. Yeah. Yeah, we'll, we'll go for the marina. We got our cabinet over here, which means we also would like to get our grand hotel. Although that said, the appeal, the appeal of the civic square in this city is quite low without the addition of this fairground. I can get it quite high if I use things like the marketing agency and build this fairground. Let's just do a museum of archaeology in here. Boom. We'll buy the archaeologist. Because now, remember, everything is cheaper for me, so buying things is actually super worth it. We'll get, to work, we'll get to work on that fairground to see if we can raise the appeal of this tile and maybe make that worth it in terms of the adjacency bonus. So we got Hue Huey Toakali in here, which is basically the first thing that we built. Um, I definitely feel like the Civic Square represents the most amount of tourism I can get from these tiles. So we'll go ahead and get that first. I think I settle on the copper here because it's a bonus resource and it'll get in the way of everything else. And I have to improve the coal. Improve the warrior, eat the warrior. Now I got myself a musketman army and I can go clear out this island and potentially settle it or at least grab the antiquity sites. Now this guy really wants to kill me. What is worth pillaging? Ooh, this looks very, very pillageable. Probably shouldn't have end, ended my turn here because I can get shot by both of these cities, but that's okay. We live and we learn. Wasn't paying too much attention. And uh, now it came to bite me in the ass. Ah, so we have just finished our first coal power plant, which means we're finally using uh, electricity, um, which I think we're the first person in the world to do so. And it's over here. Awesome. We just got our encampment in here and that was purely for the envoy missions. The only one that's left is like recruit a great merchant, scientist, religious conversion. How badly would it be for me to do a great scientist thing here? It could be possible for me to get a great scientist. Alfred Nobel is not a very good one though, so I might hold off. I definitely think it's time we got the pleasure pier up. And but more importantly, I'm going to get my tier three government building. So let's have a look at what the city's actually doing. It looks like it's focused heavily on working its terrain, which I'm happy about. It has tons of amenities. I could go for the Royal Society, which would allow me to use my builders to finish projects, which I don't think I care about too much. The National History Museum would give me great work slots, which I like. The War Department makes it easier to go to war. I think I go for the Natural History Mu National History Museum. Extra great work slots seems really great to me. We got the Pleasure Pier in Capiti. And this particular Pleasure Pier, I think it was meant to be about AOE amenities hitting these two cities. Then it was about the Marina, right? I have one, two, three Marinas worthy. Now the Marina just seems so good. Yeah, we pick up the marina. Marina, it's tourism. It's disgusting. This marina has potentially two fishing boats adjacent to it. And then there's one, two. Yeah, marina. Marinas just seem so good for my empire right now. Being able to generate uh, tourism off of my coastal tiles is really powerful. I'm up to 450 tourism now. Have my coal power plant in Fanganui. Let's I go. It's a Mia Mario. Where did I build my diplomatic quarter again? Does anyone remember? Was it over here in Tamutu? Did I forget to buy the chance? I forgot to buy the chance. Okay, I definitely have been missing out on a lot of influence here. In fact, I'm missing out on three influence per turn. So that's like a third of my influence income has just been missing for many, many turns. It's a lot of envoys I missed out on. So that's a bit unfortunate. Speaking of Fanganui again, I reckon yeah, the appeal on this city is just terrible. So I shouldn't bother doing anything appeal related. Uh, maybe, maybe a campus is the right call in here to try to just generate that little bit of extra science. There's military science, which gives us access to the military academy. This gives a 25% combat experience boost to all units built in the city, with the exception of siege units. It also gives them a free promotion and allows you to train corps and armies directly, and it reduces their cost by 25%. Free production, one housing, gives you more great general points. Ooh, plus two great general points instead of plus one, and a little bit of culture on your citizen yield. So that's quite powerful, and it can't be built in the same place as an arsenal. But an arsenal gives you very, very similar things, but more heavy on the production side of things without the free promotion. So the free promotion there is the big reason to go for the military academy. So I would say if you're going to be building a unit where it's where getting that first promotion is actually a big deal or you need units to have a heal 
in the tank right away. The military academy seems quite based here. I think global warming is going to start ramping up now that I'm burning coal. So I'm going to prioritize picking up electricity for things like the hydroelectric dam, the cruise terminal and the um, computers tech here for the 25% tourism boost, as well as the extra three power from my hydroelectric dam, which will lower the amount of emissions I'm creating and give me access to potentially things like community colleges and the Institute of Technology. Ooh, I should not. I should have built a community college in this city. Can I cancel? I mean, the laboratory is great. But if this is hitting all cities within six tiles, this campus could potentially hit five cities. But you compare that six science we're going to get from this laboratory to the community college giving me six science per city when powered. Yeah. All right. We, we, we cancel this laboratory. All right. That waste of production. It's not the end of the world. The city is very productive. So we can accept that price. Let's see if we can spend our time building Crystal Red and Tor here. Um, it's another late game wonder. Gives a little bit of tourism. It's not too bad. Uh, I'd also like to build Taj Mahal if I could. So I will pop it, pop it and drop it like a tot right there in Motupohu. Making 50 production per turn is pretty solid. We've got our aerodrome in Farakawa. Now we don't want the hangar or do we want the hangar? It's quite good, but I'm not building air units. What I want is an airport. 50% production towards all city. I mean, I'm not building anything else. I may as well get the hangar for sure. Settle on the copper. Harvest the rainforest to boost this city. We'll buy all the basic infrastructure like fishing docks, granaries. Start the harbor right there. Boom, that city is off to a great start already. He wants to sell me a great work of writing. I'll take it. A little bit of tourism. Oh, actually, mm, that's actually a really, really good point. I should start taking great works from Mongolia here if I can, because they are likely to be the um, greatest competitor that I have in terms of tourism, and that is correct. So if I can take away their great works, I will lower their tourism generation or their culture generation, which means my tourism generation is relatively bigger, which means it's easier for me to take them over. So I reckon great works of riding are quite easy and i'm pretty sure i can fit six of them quite easily 100 gold per turn do you want anything else throw in 100 diplo favor and see how they feel about that right that saved me 30 gold per turn it's a deal so i can probably fit in another great work of riding or two but that's okay we kind of we, we just took a little nibble out of their culture generation potential we got the marina in kaya which is a tourism boost i reckon we get the aquarium right Ooh, no, the casino scales really well with the commercial hub, harbor, and aerodrome. And I'm going to be building all of those in this city eventually. So we'll go for the casino and then the aerodrome. Because the casino scales really well off of the harbor, off of the airport, off of the um, commercial hub as well. We got our fairground over here. We can either go for arena for tons of amenities locally or the tourney ground for amenities across the thing. I don't think one, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah, it's not in range to hit any other city. So tourney ground just seems like a waste. So I will just pick up an arena here. I mean, in theory, the city hits Motopuhu, but I'll just take the, um, you know what? I'll take the tourney ground. That's worth two amenities. Plus this is per worth one tourism for every ally this city has a trade route to, which is quite good. Speaking of trade routes, let's buy a couple of traders in here. I'm sitting on a ton of faith too. Ooh, Sarah Breedlove is actually an incredible merchant to appear here for two reasons. First of all, the extra tourism rate. Boom. And it got me an envoy with Nazca. So the timing on Sarah Breedlove appearing was actual god tier. Um, very, very lucky that I realized that I had a ton of fate in the bank and had a poke around there. I feel like the great person screen is the hardest one to remember and keep track of and decide to go check and see if like it's worth interacting with. At least for me, I, I just kind of t tend to forget that it exists. Pillage and retreat. I'm doing really well on my tourism though. I'm at 57 out of 260. Nice. We got our first city to hit 20 population. Got two era score out of that. We're going to hit a golden age here. We have access to capitalism now. Laissez fair as well as market economy is sometimes worth plugging in. More importantly, the shopping mall is a big thing here, as is the marketing agency. The shopping mall just gives you baseline tourism as well as a bunch of amenities. It also uses power, which is a little bit eh. I don't even know if it actually uses power. Um, I think it does. I think it uses a little bit of power. And then we have the marketing agency, which will give us a bunch of money from fairgrounds, great works, as well as giving us some appeal in this city, which could be quite handy for things like seaside resorts. I feel like I want to plug in market economy. This is so good. It's so good, but it's hard to justify. 
I feel like Republican Legacy now is also really good, but also falls short behind maybe some of these other cards. I'm gonna I'm gonna hold on to Republican Legacy because it's just it's just a good card. Also, here's a fun fact. Did you know that the um the plus two damage that you get from having a flanking attack is actually pretty big in terms of damage. Uh, I think plus three combat strength represents about a 10% increase in the damage you do and a 10% decrease in the damage you take. Plus five is like 25%, seven is like 50%, and then seven, uh, 17 is like 100%. It like scales weird. I can't remember how, to, how it goes, but I, I'd, like to do a, I'd like to do a video on how combat strength in this game works. I feel like a lot of people misunderstand it. Oh yeah, right. I was meant to build um, Mont Saint Michel here so I could maybe get a couple of relics. Yeah, I think I'll go for the aquarium in here as an exception. Let's pop Sarah Breedlove in there for that 25% tourism boost. Now we're going to get 50% tourism boost for trading with people. And we're generating enough tourism to where the victory counter has started. And that is usually the signal that you're on track to win the game. Um, so I'm pretty excited about that. Let's up this, upgrade this guy to a cavalry because I'd like to have a slightly stronger unit and run around and pillage this guy's land um, until he pieces me out. Although the one thing is I can't trade with him, but he's not like super competitive. So maybe being at war with him is worth more in terms of fun for the game, not necessarily tourism, but definitely worth more fun. Nice. We have access to radio, which gives us access to the broadcast tower. It extends its bonus culture to all cities within six tiles that do not already have a bonus from this type of bu uh, building. Uh, citizens in the city exert loyalty pressure to this city. Uh, this pressure also affects other cities within nine tiles, but it's 10% less effective per tile. So this doubles the population pressure from this city, which is quite powerful. Uh, then we also have the naval base, which is one of the tier three options or the late game tiers for your sh your shipyards. Uh, it gives extra combat strength for your naval units, gives a free promotion to your naval units and makes it easier to train your naval units as well as a, a little bit of a production housing citizen slots great admiral points and citizen yields quite good for generating great admirals and for building a navy we have the seaside resort which is quite cool we'll want a few of those and then access to al aluminium as we're all familiar with I will grab the botanical garden in this city it's worth to tourism as well as a little bit of science on these plantations and farms and more importantly It'll also give me amenities. We got our grand hotel over here. So now we're generating a little bit of tourism off of this. Very cool. District yields is plus six. What's the baseline yield on this district actually? It's plus three and I have the card plugged in that gives me 100% civic square adjacency. So I think that actually does. I completely forgot to check this earlier, but I'm getting six tourism from this, three adjacency. So that actually does apply. Um, so the Grand Hotel is a lot better than I thought, and adjacency on civic squares in this mod is a lot better than I thought. Don't know. I do have a few antiquity sites around, so I feel like a Museum of Archaeology here is the right call. 600 gold for the museum, 1,300 for the archaeologist. I don't know if I need this in particular, like the broadcast tower itself. I'm feeling like I would much rather get something like a neighborhood or a pleasure pier. I feel like the flat four tourism from the neighborhood could be quite strong here compared to the one tourism getting on this tile. So I'll start work on that neighborhood. Oh man, I could just do seaside resorts in this city. Oh, hell yeah. Never mind anything else. The seaside resorted up. All right, we're in position to pillage here. The cities are quite strong, but that's okay. My pillaging is stronger. Oh, look at the range on this bad boy. Kaboom. World enters into the modern era, which means airports and stuff like that are going to start working a little bit better once people start researching tech from this era, I believe. We did manage to pull off a siphon funds, which is cool, and we have access to professional sports. The stadium is more or less the same as it was. However, it does get gold from stadiums and aquatic centers if it's powered. Uh, it gives you tourism based on the population of the city. 20 pop is quite good. Plus one amenity for every four specialty districts or for every two specialty districts if the city is powered. Stadiums seem pretty strong and the Estadio de Maracana, Mac Maracana uh, seems quite good too. Plus two amenities in every city. The Aquatic Center, plus one amenity. So it's basically a stadium, but it's for a pleasure pier and it also looks like there's a concert hall that it like is ex mutually exclusive with i'm curious about the concert hall oh concert hall is over here so concert hall so it looks like the aquatic center is for generating tourism and amenities in the local city as well as a little bit of gold and the concert hall is more about generating uh aoe amenities gold in the local vicinity a bunch of amenities especially if powered 
and having a great music slot. So that's pretty cool. You're gonna, I, I love the design of these buildings. I feel like each building does a little bit too much. I just went for reform the coinage there on autopilot, by the way, because I was thinking about something else. I probably should have read that decision more carefully. I would like to build the Sydney Opera House. It's a fun one to build. It's very expensive though. It's like 2000 production. It is a really fun wonder to build though. So I think I'll, I'll get to work on cultural heritage here. Horatio Nelson. Oh, that's actually really cool. Horatio Nelson is a great guy to pick up because he opens up options with regards to instantaneously building some buildings. Although I think he might actually be changed in this mod. I got to plug in sports media for the civic square adjacency and the extra amenity. I'm sitting on seven envoys. Valletta is important to me, but how important is the real question? Maybe I wait until cold war so I can plug in containment. So I'll, I'll hold on to my own voice for now because I'd like to get more efficient use of them. Ah, so Horatio Nelson instantly builds a fishing dock and a shipyard in this district. Well, let us pop him over here in this city to be able to build this city's dock instantly. Although I think I already built a uh, fishing dock in here, which is a bit unfortunate, but it is what it is. Bulawayo, we will be continuing to steal gold from. One of the best sources of gold I have. We'll pillage for health. This guy is slowly creeping up to where he may actually be able to do some real damage to this guy by you know, fast pillaging. Oh, he's building Crystal Renator, that mother flocker. How dare he? It would be kind of a good idea to block great works of writing because I don't have many of those. Um, alternatively, if I could invest enough in to getting great works of writing to pass, but I, I really want artifacts to pass because those are obviously the best one. I will say democracy. I'll put a few points into that. I don't care who gets this, so I'll just vote for myself a little bit. Um, I'll give it to Mongolia and then I want World's Fair to pass. That's my entire diplomatic stance summarized. So it looks like tourism from artifacts is doubled for the next 30 turns. Oligarchy somehow got a wildcard slot. Uh, Mongolia did in fact get the diplomatic victory points and the World's Fair has passed. So we generate great people points equals we win this and we definitely want the diplomatic victory point. The civic boosts are honestly the best part and the 100 great people points is pretty good. Ooh, I can get Gustav Eiffel. Now, Gustav Eiffel might be my saving grace here. One turn to get here. No, he's not going to do it quick enough to save it. Oh, that sucks. I'm not going to be able to build a Christo. Well, the second we get computers, we'll head for advanced flight and then steal. And so we'll save Gustav Eiffel for building the Eiffel Tower. We got our National History Museum, so we have a ton more room for great works. I don't have my theming helper mod, but... Most of these ancient. I just need an ancient from someone who's me. Coupe, boom. Themed museum, beautiful. Just need another ancient artifact from another player and I can theme another museum. But now that we're in a new era, there should be a whole bunch of new missions. A lot of people want to be religiously converted, which is kind of odd. It's a hard one to pull off without like serious faith investment. Yeah, most of these cities want re like religious conversion or a great scientist, um, which is just not going to happen. Train a biplane is still an option. With the completion of the National History Museum in the city, I think it's good now we start actually building up the Civic Square. Possibly one of the rare cities where the mansion is better than the cabinet. I know I was supposed to build the industrial zone in Tamutu, but I think <sighs> the problem is that it lowers the appeal. I don't like lowered appeal if I go for the factory. Oh, I completely forgot to build a Civic Square in here. Well, that'll keep that city, city busy. That's, that's fine. Aquarium. We don't want the casino and then we also would like to get the cabinet. So a lot of my decisions now are semi-rote, not entirely trivial, but just not a huge amount of thinking goes into every decision that I'm making because they're often decisions that I have kind of evaluated a long time ago and it's a matter of executing again. And uh, it's not necessarily a bad thing. I actually really like this phase of the game because you feel like you're like, you're basically playing bingo, right? You're like, okay, what do I build here? Boom, I cross off that number. And then you slowly but surely build up a city, an empire that like fits a very, very specific mold that you've designed. And that to me is just like a really satisfying gameplay loop and I really enjoy it. I actually want this guy to get shot by the city because it's worth two experience per every time. And there's a there's an easy enough heal nearby. So there's electricity. This gives us access to the hydroelectric dam, which gives us uh, four power per turn from renewable sources, an extra three when we have computers. And if we have a hydroelectric dam, with a battery substation, we can convert that power into renewable battery charges. We also have the oil power plant and the 
uh, cruise terminal, the oil power plant converts oil into power. Minus one appeal in the city, one oil equals four power. It provides a production bonus in all nearby cities. It gives domestic trade routes plus one production and adds four production to the city as well as a citadel slot, a great engineer point and plus one production. But it is incompatible with a lot of these other things. The cruise terminal is 25% tourism from wonders in this city. All world wonders also provide plus four gold, plus two gold from each pleasure pier building in the city, and plus one gold to each seaside resort in the city. And remember, seaside resort gold with the addition of Crystal Red and Tor is actually uh, converted into tourism. So this is a really, really, really good tourism building. I'm just kind of sad that he's building this Crystal. I'm devastated that uh, he beat me to it. I should have maybe prioritized it and actually like tried to get it but it is what it is i should totally stop building this by the way because it's actually a waste of my production and instead i'll put my money into a liberal arts college which is definitely not a waste of my money you know what with the appeal of this local area a builder in here with a um a shipyard and a cruise terminal and ideally a commercial hub with a um thing that gives plus one appeal on all these tiles this could be a really good tourism generation city so i'm going to start converting that over to that direction the marketing agency gives you plus one appeal on every tile which is quite powerful um the state did i want the stadium or did i want the convention center convention center extends amenities around gives extra adjacency bonus to the district turns the gold it uh, doubles the uh gives you gold according to the adjacency bonus as well as a bunch of amenities. Ooh, convention center. Man, that's tough. To, like, I mean, to be fair, the fairground does give you tourism based on its adjacency. So a building that doubles the adjacency and turns that into gold seems quite powerful. The adjacency of this is already three. So if I doubled that, that seems quite good. And I think I'm using the card. Or maybe that card doesn't exist. I would love a card that doubled the adjacency of uh, fairground. So does that, does that actually exist? I don't see it in here, but it would be cool if it did. Um, yeah, so I think I'm going to save for the convention center then. And instead in here, I will naturally just go for the Grand Hotel. Tourism is up to 600 per turn. We have 72 out of 300. Got our pleasure pier. Definitely feel like a marina is the right choice. Is it though? I only have one fishing boat. Yeah, Ferris wheel it is. Where am I going to be building the Eiffel Tower? I actually don't have... Oh wait, I can build it over here. I can build the Eiffel Tower in this city. It's a hundred production city, so it seems like it'll be able to do the job. Do I want the cruise terminal? Pleasure Pier buildings will give me extra gold. I don't have World Wonders in here. I, I built a fairground, so I don't think the cruise terminal is the right move. I think a seaport is the right move in this. Working a lot of these coastal tiles, and I'm pretty sure the seaport... Yeah, it gives you food to each fishing boat and fishery. Production towards offshore improvements. Improving, yeah, extra trade route. Awesome. International trade routes gain plus one gold. Generally, yeah, this is. This, I feel like Seaport is the right move for this city. I'm going to pick up the culture bonus because I can spread my culture around a little bit. This civic square is quite central. We'll grab the hangar in here. I think I wanted an airport in this area of the world. If I build an airport right here, it'll hit all three of these cities, which is a 25% tourism boost potentially. Boom, trade dock purchased. Boom, shipyard purchased. Boom, civic square started. Definitely want another builder in here as well. Prioritize that. City is growing very rapidly, just needs more production. I'm sitting on 10 envoys, but I'm waiting for Cold War, so I'm okay with staying in that position. First seaside resort in this city. Kaboom. Plus five tourism per turn. Very nice. Would have been would have been um would have been plus ten with Crystal Red and Tor because it doubles the tourism, it doubles the amount of tourism conversion you get on um on seaside resorts. Which is why I want it, because it's a really, really powerful wonder. Even if you only have a handful of seaside resorts, like it, it does work. It does it does a lot of heavy lifting. Pillage. I still feel like pillaging should give you XP. So we have a trade route here. This was a trade route with Egypt. So I'll just repeat a slightly better trade route with Egypt. Picking up our very first shopping mall in Otara Pa. I don't have anything else I really need. I could get a cruise terminal terminal in theory, but there's no wonders in this city, so it doesn't seem worth it. Let's finally make peace with Mansa Musa and see if he'll give me anything. No, he'll just take peace. All I did was pillage him a bit, so he doesn't care too much about my units running around doing that. Has anyone started a science race yet? No, it doesn't look like it, so we're good. We can keep sending our spies on uh, gold stealing missions. Let's go ahead and get ourselves a Minus Gires here, because I have a, uh, <laughs> a bit of a battleship problem. In that uh, things aren't going well, well for me here. Just continuously spawning guys. And it might get these guys to actually turn into a city state, I would hope. All right, nice. We got our Ferris wheel in here. We want to get all our basics, like our trade dock. At the very least, we want a trade dock, like for sure. Shipyard as well. 
and we'll also get ourselves a cabinet. The city needs like two builders. We'll slowly build them up in here. But yeah, I'm going to call that the end of the episode. We're making huge progress. I think my empire is now super set up. The next episode is going to be massive for me. I will be finishing computers. All right. That's going to give me a 25% boost to my tourism. I will be getting environmentalism 100% getting environmentalism for that extra 25%. So this is going to easily go up to nearly a thousand tourism per turn. Uh, and we're also going to be getting online communities for a 50% increase to our tourism. So our tourism output is about to skyrocket and that's going to end the game very, very quickly. So I'm going to call that the end of the game or the end of the episode. I love you all very much and I'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye.